Hello! In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to create maps for your role playing game using nothing other than Microsoft Excel. It's easiest to begin from a template. You can either make your own or grab the file I use from our website. For today's example, we'll recreate this small hand drawn map. The first thing I do is shade the squares that will make up the map to help them stand out from all of the others. To do this, just begin highlighting cells while holding down the control key. Once you've selected all of the cells you want to shade, click the paint bucket icon under the font group and select a light gray color. With the shading done, we can move on to outline the borders themselves. Although there are many ways you can do this, the easiest and fastest I've found is to use the draw border tool located under the font borders group. Make sure you set the line color to black and select a thick border from the line style menu. The diagonal lines are a little tricky, but with some practice you'll get the hang of drawing them. If you make a mistake, you can quickly undo it by using Ctrl Z. To draw the little cave, we'll go to the Insert Shapes menu and pick Scribble. Then it's just a matter of drawing the shape we want and setting the color and the thickness of the line, which is done using the Format Shape Outline menu. I typically use a black line set to two and a quarter thickness. Now we can add the dungeon features we want. This is where the pre-generated icons found on the icons tab of the template come in handy. Rather than having to recreate them all the time, you can just grab one and drop it into your map. We'll start with a little dotted circle marked with a T to indicate a trap door in the floor of the upper room. Once it's in place, we can grab a ladder from the Icons tab and plop it in the first room of the dungeon itself. If you wanted to, you could add some text, noting that the trap door connects to the ladder. Next up are the double doors that separate these two rooms. I didn't really find an ideal shape for them, so I'll grab a gray box, resize it, and then make a copy. To line them up perfectly, use the Align tool you'll find under the Format menu. The big statue is easy. It's just a simple copy-paste from the Icons tab. Next we move on to the long hall with a bunch of little marks lining both sides. For these, we'll use a small triangle. Just copy-paste the triangle from the Icons tab and line up the lower icons about where they'll end up. Once they're all on the map, we can use the Format Align option to get them perfectly aligned with one another. Rather than do this all over again for the upper marks, we'll turn these into a group by selecting them all, right-clicking, and selecting Group. Once we have the group, we can copy it, paste it onto our map, spin it around using the little wheel icon, and align it with the lower set using the Format Align menu. Both the pillars and the statues in the next room are easy and involve nothing more than copy-paste and placement. This can take a little bit of time, but once you get used to it, it all goes pretty fast. For the last room, we can grab a sarcophagus from the Icons tab and then draw some black squares using the Insert Shapes Rectangle menu. They probably won't be black when you initially draw them, but you can fix this on the Format tab as shown. Once again, we line them up with the Format Align menu and copy-paste them to quickly produce the second set. The last thing we'll do here is highlight all the cells and shade them in white to undo the shading we did way back at the start. The last thing we'll do today is draw a cave similar to what we see in the upper left of the map. Start with a straight line from the Insert Shapes menu. Set the line outline to black and its weight to two and a quarter. The cave mouth is just a free form shape drawn by choosing free form from the insert shapes menu and then setting its fill and outline to black. Last, we can drop on some rocks from the icons tab, resize them a bit, move them around, and call it done. And that's it. Now you can go make your own maps using Microsoft Excel.